Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an interesting logarithmic equation. We have ln of ln x equals log of log x. In this case, ln means the natural logarithm with base e, and log is log with base 10, which is also known as the common logarithm. Now, we're going to be solving for x values, and let's see how we can do it. The answer will be pretty surprising. Now, we do have an identity called change of base, or a formula, I should say. So anytime you have something like log of a number, like let's say log of a, suppose I'm using base 10, and I should probably not use base 10 because um, base 10 is going to be one of, anyways, just, let's just use base b. Let's say we have log base b with base b of a, and we want to write it in a different base, such as 10 or e or any other base. Let's say we use base x. So we can kind of write it as a quotient of two logs with base x. And then the a goes here because a is the higher number and b goes here. Make sense? This is very easy to prove by using the definition of logarithms. But this is a really nice identity or formula known as change of base. Great. So that's the formula we're going to use. And how do we apply it? to this scenario. Let's go ahead and take a look. Since we have at base 10, let's say we have log a, and I want to turn it into natural log. I would probably write ln a over ln 10, right? Because, because we have an invisible 10 here, don't we? We should have an invisible 10 here. Let me go ahead and write it down. So we have an invisible 10, and definitely you can write it like this. a goes here and 10 goes here. Make sense? So that's what I'm going to do. We'll replace log a with ln a over ln 10, right? So on the right hand side, notice that we have ln ln x equals log of log x. This is going to be my a. So we're going to write this, the right hand side as log a will be written as ln a, which is ln of log x divided by ln 10. Obviously, the denominator is a constant. It's not going to change. So it's good. Okay, so we kind of have like two LNs, right? But we also have a coefficient, but don't worry, we can take care of that. So let's write this expression. So I'm going to write the division by LN10 as multiplication by the reciprocal of LN10, which is 1 over LN10. So we're going to write this as 1 over LN10 multiplied by LN of log x. Make sense? I just turned this into a multiplication problem because I'm about to use the power property. Yes, whenever you have a number like this, you can go ahead and make that an exponent. And remember, it's kind of like this. ln a to the power n can be written as n times ln a, or n times ln a can be written as ln a to the power n. Make sense? So now we're going to get the following from here ln ln x equals ln log x to the power, this is going to become the power, 1 over ln 10. So far so good? Are you with me? Now we have lns on both sides and no coefficients. So that's good. We need to clear everything before we can start solving this equation. But how do you solve an equation with lns? Again, we have a formula for that. Actually, mathematicians have a formula for everything, right? So if you have ln a equals ln b, then it automatically implies a equals b. Of course, we're talking about the real uh, logarithm here, right? Why is that happening, though? Because if you think about the graph of the ln function, it is actually 1 to 1. It's a bijection, right? So this is x, this is y. Anytime you have the two numbers that have the same ln, then they have to be the same. In other words, if you take two different numbers, then their lns will also be different. Make sense? Because that's the contrapositive of, hopefully you know what I'm talking about. If you studied a little bit of logic, which is p implies q stuff, then you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so this property is really nice because that gives us the answer. So using that property, we can safely say that, let me go ahead and copy that, ln ln x equals ln log x to the power, remember the exponent, 1 over ln 10, I almost forgot. Now, here's what we're going to do. This is going to be our a and this is going to be our b. So now we can say ln x equals log x to the power 
1 over ln 10. So far so good. This is my A, this is my B. ln A equals ln B implies A equals B. Make sense? Great. Now, we got a simpler equation. At least uh, it was kind of two layers. Now we are, we have one layer. How do you solve this? Again, change of pace, right? How do you write log X? Let's turn it into ln. I mean, you can also do the other way around, doesn't really matter, because one of the things that you can definitely do here is raise both sides to the power ln 10, and that'll give you ln x to the power ln 10 equals log x, and then you can kind of turn this into log x something, if you want. It's not necessary, I'm just gonna turn a log so that I end up with an ln because I like ln better than log, even though we use decimal system and base 10, so on and so forth. Anyways, natural log is actually cooler and has a lot of nice properties. And think about Euler's number, which is the base, right? So, we're going to go ahead and write this log x as, do you remember? ln x over ln 10, and then we're going to raise it to the power 1 over ln 10. We're super duper close to the solution. What we need to do is bring everything with x on the same side and then the constants on the other side. So let's go ahead and apply properties of exponents to this, ln x to the power 1 over ln 10 divided by ln 10 to the power 1 over ln 10. Here I use the property that is known as if you have a over b to the power n, you can write it as a to the n over b to the n. Of course b should not be 0, so on and so forth. Now, if we don't have all the ln's on the same side, let's go ahead and bring this over to the left by division and leave this as a fraction. So we're going to have ln x divided by ln x to the power 1 over ln 10. That's what I'm dividing both sides by. And on the right hand side, I'm getting a constant, a super duper constant, a very natural logarithmic, right? Now, we have ln x to the first power because it's not written, right? Divided by another power, what do you do with the exponents? You subtract them, don't you? So this is going to be ln x to the power 1 minus 1 over ln 10. And that's going to equal 1 over ln 10 to the power 1 over ln 10. What's the value of ln 10? You can use a calculator to do it. But the exact value of ln 10 is ln 10. So the next thing we're going to do is just simplify the exponent a little bit or make a common denominator. And I do need that because I'm about to flip. You'll see what I'm talking about. So to get the ln x by itself, I do need to raise both sides to the power of the reciprocal. Uh, so it's going to be ln 10 over ln 10 minus 1 on both sides, ln 10 over ln 10 minus 1. And what happens is these are multiplied together to form 1 and we get ln x. But guess what? ln x is not the answer, so it's not the end of our troubles, but we're almost there. So just bear with me, and good job if you're still around. I want to get x, and notice that uh, x is e to the power ln x. So if we do e to the power ln x, that's going to be e to the power 1 over ln 10 to the power 1 over ln 10 to the power ln 10 over ln 10 minus 1. Awesome. That should be our answer. And this should bring us to the end of this video. Let's see if I have any graphs. Yes, I got the result from Wolfram Alpha. And there should be a graph, the point where they intersect. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.